the practice of clear observation. He who practices clear observation should observe that all conditioned phenomena in the world are unstationary and are subject to instantaneous transformation and destruction, that all activities of the mind arise and are extinguished from moment to moment, and that, therefore, all of these induce suffering. He should observe that all that had been conceived in the past was as hazy as a dream, that all that is being conceived in the present is like a flash of lightning, and that all that will be conceived in the future will be like clouds that rise up suddenly. He should also observe that the physical existences of all living beings in the world are impure, and that among those various filthy things there is not a single one that can be sought after with joy. He should reflect in the following way. All living beings, from the beginningless beginning, because they are permeated by ignorance, have allowed their mind to remain in samsara. They have already suffered all the great miseries of the body and mind. They are at present under incalculable pressure and constraint, and their sufferings in the future will likewise be limitless. These sufferings are difficult to forsake, difficult to shake off, and yet these beings are unaware that they are in such a state. For this they are greatly to be pitied. After reflecting in this way, he should pluck up his courage and make a great vow to this effect. May my mind be free from discrimination, so that I may practice all of the various meritorious acts everywhere in the ten directions. May I, to the end of the future, by applying limitless expedient means, help all suffering sentient beings, so that they may obtain the bliss of nirvana, the ultimate goal. Having made such a vow, he must, in accordance with his capacity and without faltering, practice every kind of good at all times and at all places, and not be slothful in his mind. Except when he sits in concentration in the practice of cessation, he should at all times reflect upon what should be done and what should not be done. Whether walking, standing, sitting, lying, or rising, he should practice both cessation and clear observation side by side. That is to say, he is to meditate upon the fact that things are unborn in their essential nature. But at the same time, he is to meditate upon the fact that good and evil karma, produced by the combination of the primary cause and the coordinating causes, and the retributions of karma in terms of pleasure, pain, etc., are neither lost nor destroyed. Though he is to meditate on the retribution of good and evil karma produced by the primary and coordinating causes, that is, he is to practice clear observation, he is also to meditate on the fact that the essential nature of things is unobtainable by intellectual analysis. The practice of cessation will enable ordinary people to cure themselves of their attachments to the world, and will enable the followers of the Hinayana to forsake their views which derive from cowardice. The practice of clear observation will cure the followers of the Hinayana of the fault of having narrow and inferior minds that bring forth no great compassion, and will free ordinary people from their failure to cultivate the capacity for goodness. For these reasons, both cessation and clear observation are complementary and inseparable. If the two are not practiced together, then one cannot enter the path to enlightenment. Next, suppose there is a person who learns this teaching for the first time and wishes to seek the correct faith, but lacks courage and strength. Because he lives in this world of suffering, he fears that he will not always be able to meet the Buddhas and honor them personally, and that, faith being difficult to perfect, he will be inclined to fall back. He should know that the Tathagatas have an excellent expedient means by which they can protect his faith. 
that is, through the strength of wholehearted meditation on the Buddha, he will, in fulfillment of his wishes, be able to be born in the Buddha land beyond, to see the Buddha always, and to be forever separated from the evil states of existence. It is as the Sutra says, if a person meditates wholly on Amitabha Buddha in the world of the Western Paradise and wishes to be born in that world, directing all the goodness he has cultivated toward that goal, then he will be born there. Because he will see the Buddha at all times, he will never fall back. If he meditates on the Dharmakaya, the suchness of the Buddha, and with diligence keeps practicing the meditation, he will be able to be born there in the end because he abides in the correct samadhi.